Good morning. Welcome to Fort Laramie Country Church. We're glad you're with us this morning. And as we get started here, we're going to be talking about baptism. And uh, so let's have a word of prayer. Father, as we look into your word right now, give us understanding into this topic. Help us see what you intended it to be. And we ask this in your word, in your name. Amen. This is going to be more like a Bible study this morning, and the reason being is we have some people that have given their life to Christ and would like to be baptized in the next week or two, and I just wanted to explain what baptism was prior uh, to us doing it so people have a real good understanding of it. When, uh, when I was a child, I was baptized as a baby, if you will, and, and uh, it, when I gave my life to Christ in my 20s, I started studying baptism. I want to know what it was. See, I used to think baptism is what you did to get to heaven, and so, uh, hey, I've been baptized. I was good to go. And as I studied God's Word, I realized that's not what baptism was at all, and it wasn't intended to be that way. Uh, so today we're going to look about what baptism is, and the reason we baptize as a church and the reason we think it's important to be baptized is found in Matthew 28, 19 to start with. It says, therefore, that just is the last thing Jesus talked to his disciples about uh, prior uh, to leaving them. And, um, and it really, it was the mission that he gave them. But it goes this way. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so you get started. What's a disciple? It says, go make disciples. That's a follower of Jesus Christ. It's, it's one who put their faith and trust in who Jesus is and why he came and what he did. Um, See, we're not saved by baptism. We're saved by grace through, we're saved by grace through faith. And it says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for, you, for by grace you've been saved through faith. And that it's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Now grace is God's part. Grace is giving us something we don't deserve. In fact, Romans 3.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. See, when we sin, we have earned death. And, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, and that's grace. We deserve death. But because of Jesus Christ, we can have life, eternal life. That's grace. That's God's part. Uh, faith is our part. This is where we put our faith in Jesus Christ to save us. Uh, our faith is actually more than believing that he exists. In fact, James 2.19 says, You believe that there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Faith is actually acting on what you believe. If I told you, that there was a bomb in your house and, and there was a bunch of people sitting in your house or, or here in the church building and I said there was a bomb here. Uh, who would believe that? How would you know the people believe that? The people that got up and left. That, that's faith. That's acting on faith. They, they believe that that's true so they act on it. That's what faith is. Uh, and, and you can believe there is a Jesus, but you need to act on that. Putting your faith in Jesus is where you act on that. You believe and you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's acting on it. Uh, when I was growing up, I believed there was a Jesus. I believe he exists. I had no question with that. But until I was in my 20s, did I act on that? And I put my faith and trust in him at that point. The other thing I know about faith is nobody can do it for you. I, I can't make you believe in Jesus. I can't make you trust Jesus. You have to do that. You can't do that for me. I can't do that for you. Your parents can't do that for you. Faith means you have to be old enough to even understand what you're doing uh, when it says we're saved by grace through faith. Um, now we're going to be talking about baptism here and I want to I clarify what that means. Uh, they were told to go make disciples and then baptize them. The word baptism comes from the Greek word baptismo. It means to immerse or submerge 
or to overwhelm or to make overwhelm it says it was it was more like a blacksmith term uh, the guy would a blacksmith would get that iron hot and he'd be pounding on it but but in order to temper it or cool it down he would virtually baptismo it and that's where we get the word baptism to immerse or submerge it in fact in John 3 23 it says it this way now John was also baptizing in Enon and Silim because there was plenty of water there. Why did he need plenty of water to baptize? Because they were, they were immersing the person in water. When we were in Claremont, we had Clear Creek ran by there, and a lot of people wanted to be baptized in Clear Creek, but because of the temperatures of the water, we had to wait a lot of times till uh, July or late June before we could do it. And what you get into is because people irrigate out of it and, and the snowpack falls that the water got a little shallow in places. So there was a place on uh, Roblings where we could go there because there was plenty of water to baptize them in. So we could immerse them. That's what he's talking about here. Now the reason we submerge, and really baptism's not our salvation, it's a picture of our salvation. It's, it's, um, it can be seen, it's a visible it's a visible symbol of what we have done. I can, uh, was elk hunting a few years ago, and Nancy knew I was up elk hunting, and, and all I had to do after I harvested an elk was take a picture and send it to her. I didn't need any other explanation. She knew what had happened. She knew what was going on. That's like baptism. And it's, it's when, we'd have, when we're baptized, it's like showing people what has happened in our life. Romans 6, 1 through 4. What shall I say then? Shall I go on sinning that may, grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? You were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. See the picture of the death and resurrection of Christ in baptism? Uh, dying and coming out of the grave just as Christ has raised from the dead? Because of our faith in Christ, we too have been raised from the dead. It's a picture of our salvation that we may walk in this newness of life or live a new life. And uh, it, it shows a simple transformation of dying and coming to life anew. It's a picture of a new life in Christ. And it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. It's a picture of the death and resurrection of Marty. Because, not because salvation, not because baptism did it, it's because of my faith in Jesus Christ did that. And it's like the old is dead and the new has come. Colossians 2, 11 through 13. In him who were circumcised, in the putting off of the sinful nature, not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. See, in the Old Testament and, and with the, the Jewish people, the circumcision was a sign of God's covenant in the Old Testament. In fact, a circumcision of a Jewish male was required as a visible, physical sign of the covenant between he and God. And circumcision uh, was, was that idea, was the covenant, the relationship he had between God and his people. Baptism serves as a sign of our new covenant relationship with God's people. In this way, it's saying, I'm putting my faith, it's a visible sign, of I'm putting my faith in the covenant of Jesus Christ. Now this is where people, this verse I'm about to read, is where people really struggle with some things, and I wanna just clarify it a little bit. And in fact, there's uh, some big doctrine comes from this in, in certain denominations. 
Acts uh, 2.38. Jesus replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now here it sounds like you have to be baptized and saved, but the word for is, is for the forgiveness of sins, and it sounds like you have to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And that's really that one word, you, it's really easy to get hung up on. It's really saying the word for points out that's the grace that saved us because we're saved by grace through faith. It doesn't say and then be baptized. That's not what it says. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is saying it because of our forgiveness of sin. And putting that in perspective, the thief on the cross put his faith in Christ just prior to his death. And Jesus didn't say, now go down and get baptized so you can be saved. No, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. In fact, I have had the privilege of seeing several men on their deathbed give their life to Christ. And one man, it was an amazing thing to experience. There was no way they were physically able to be baptized. Did they go to heaven? Sure they did. Because they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It wasn't baptism that saves them. You know, we're saved by grace through faith. Being baptism is just a way of saying, I'm putting my faith in the new deal Jesus Christ has done so my sins may be forgiven. See, Jesus was baptized, and he was about 30 years old when that happened. He didn't have to be baptized. There was no sin in his life. It was an act of obedience. And his father said, this is, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. We hear that at Jesus' baptism, if you read about that. It, it, it had nothing to do with Jesus' sins being forgiven, it had to do as an act of obedience. And that's what it is. Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. It's the shedding of blood that Jesus Christ did on the cross that forgives our sins. That covers us. It's His blood. It's, it's the blood of the Lamb. And, and, and let me, I don't know who wrote this, but I like the way it says it. And it says, He who comes to be baptized comes with a professed conviction that, that he is a sinner and that there's no other way of mercy but in the gospel and with the professed and professed willingness to comply with the terms of salvation and to receive it as it is offered through Jesus Christ. And baptism is just a picture of that salvation. Now, it also sounds like in order, when you read that verse there, it almost sounds like uh, you, that's how you receive the Holy Spirit when you're baptized. And that's not the case at all. In fact, in Acts 10, 46, listen to what Peter said about baptism. Anyway, there, Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. You see, they've already, they already got saved. They already, they already put their trust in Jesus Christ and they were saved and so he said there's no reason they shouldn't be baptized they, they've already been saved they already received Christ in fact when we receive Christ in in Ephesians 4 30 it says we're sealed for the day of redemption that's what the Holy Spirit does it seals us for the day of redemption redemption and and that's what he's talking about here now I want to take another step forward here there's no place that I could find in God's Word where, where babies were baptized. There's two places where it talks about whole families being baptized, but I've baptized whole families. In fact, I've baptized a family of five, but all three of the kids were old enough to know and have received Christ. But there's no place where, where children were baptized. Um, in fact, in, eight, in Acts 8.12, it says it this way. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Now, women being baptized back then, that was a huge deal. That was, that was a big deal, actually. But it doesn't say anything here about, about babies or children at all. Now, I have no problem baptizing a child who has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In fact, we've had children, and, and our kids were young when they accepted Christ, but they came to a point where they understood that they needed to have their sins forgiven. In fact, uh, I tell this story. Uh, we had um, a, 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 a children's program going on in Claremont, and the teachers called and said, we've got a little girl down here 
that wants to accept Christ. We come down here and talk to her about it. So I did. And this little girl with big eyes, you always want them to understand exactly why they need to put their trust in Jesus. So they need to understand that they've, they've sinned, they've done something wrong, that, that they're not right with God. And this little girl, as I started talking to her big eyes, she goes, and as I asked her that question, she goes, I'm a sinner. <laughs> it made me smile and laugh today. But she understood that she needed Jesus. And so I had no trouble with her putting her faith and trust in Jesus Christ and baptizing her. That was not even a, a, a problem. But 1 John 5.11 says this, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. There's no, no not a word baptized mentioned there. It's His Son, Jesus Christ, that gives us eternal life. And that happens through faith as we put our trust in Him. If you've never done that, you can do that right now, right where you are at home or wherever you're watching this. You just have to acknowledge that you're a sinner and that you need a Savior and that you're going to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to cover those sins. But the reason we're doing this today and talking about this is maybe you've given your life to Christ and would like to be baptized and have never been baptized. We're going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Call me and talk to me. I would love to talk to you about baptism and the importance of it. Let's pray. Father, I'm going to ask right now, there's people out there watching this that have never put their faith and trust in you. We're going to ask you to open their hearts to you right now and that they do trust you. And Father, as, as, as we move on with this and are baptizing people, we do it in such a way that honors and glorifies you and points people to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.